five. All right, welcome back, folks, as we're here for a development side session for Zogi Paga the Divine. And Zogi, what is it you want to work on today? Um, I planned on bringing Morgan to the Green Sun to visit a couple of key locations in hopes to develop my bond with her a little bit more, but also kind of get uh, my foot out into different suns. All right. Well, let's see how it happens. Um... Are you picking up Morgan at her place, or are you meeting her back at the Soul Society? Um, do I know where she lives, or do I only know of the Soul Society right now? You did walk her home in your thread, so yes, you know where she lives, in the hollows. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'll go pick her up at her house. All right, let's uh, start off with a Sooth card. And that is the Mysterious Rune. All right, Mysterious Rune has some great artwork on that card. I love that picture. Um, so it's going to be a bonus for red magic and a uh, negative for blue. And that's going to be a part of the member or the family of secrets. All right. So you find your way back to Morgan's household, um, and she lives in a quaint little area on um, a side street in the hollows actually not far from the Diamond Row. Um, you walk through their neighborhood, and it's kind of quiet and rundown, as the Hollows generally is, um, until you come to our house, which is a small, laid-back, um, single-floor-like cottage um, just tucked away into our neighborhood. And you stroll up, knock on the door, and wait patiently for her to answer what seems like a egregiously long time before the door swings open and there is Morgan uh, standing before you um, we're dressed all in leather she's got a leather jacket um, with a white top underneath and leather pants with leather boots and she's wearing black gloves and she just smiles and greets you warmly ready to head out on this grand adventure of yours Perfect. Um, yeah, so I'll, compl I'll compliment her on her looks and uh, kind of uh, direct her towards the way of the sun ships because uh, we're going to the green sun. All right, why don't you go ahead and roll an interaction check? Okay. Let's see how good your um, compliments are. All right, I have a rank in persuasion, so that's going to be an effect in this role. <laughs> it's going to be a three. Thank you for the compliments, she says, smiling, um, noting your empty hands as if she were expecting flowers or some other typical date-like trope. Instead, she extends her arm and allows you to lead the way forward. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab her hand and I'll mm -hmm. lead her. As you stroll out um, from her neighborhood, you enter the Penny Fair Bazaar, um, which is basically that rundown shop-like area right as you get to the gates of the hollows. Um, and despite the time of evening that it is, um, it's particularly busy with folks running around everywhere and whatnot. Um, the crowds are kind of thronged about. And as you try to hurriedly get through the crowd, um, an old woman barks at you. Um, and she's wearing a black 
uh, like faded robe, and she's got old, wrinkly skin um, and yellowed teeth. But she calls out to you and draws your attention and goes, Oh, great divine one, bless us with your presence. You have been blessed. I am here. Morgan kind of shifts uncomfortably at the attention that the old woman is drawn. But despite her uncomfort, the old woman continues coming around from her vendor stall with arms spread wide. And she's like, great divine one, freer of the spirits of the host. Zogi Poga the Divine, I was been waiting for you to come to my humble shop. I would love to see uh, your shop. She cackles like maniacally, like, you know, old witch type cackle, and she waves you closer. Um, and you can see on her vendor cart, there's like all of these books, um, old books just strewn about. They're not even organized like you'd see like for sale. They're just in piles and stacks. Like somebody dumped them onto the top of her cart. And she kind of bounces back and forth eagerly as you approach the cart. And she's like, look, look at my wares. Magical tomes, tomes that tell secrets, very powerful secrets. For one such as yourself, Master Zogi the Divine. That's a very generous offer, but I'll have to decline. I'm sure there's many other people who are much more in need of knowledge. In need of knowledge, yes, yes, of course. People are always in need of knowledge, but you, you are the Divine. You are in need of one of these books. I know it. I have divined it this morning. I saw it. You would be here with your lady friend, and you are in desperate need of one of these books. Morgan kind of snickers in response. Humor me. Which book, uh, which book do I need today? Oh, indeed. A book of a book, indeed. Ha! Huh. Which book did I see you grab? I cannot remember, and I cannot fathom. Why don't you reach into the pile, Zogi, and if it's destined, you will draw the book that you need. All right, I'll reach into the pile. I'll kind of, like, shift around and find the perfect one. You kind of reach in, and as your hand brushes across various different books and whatnot, um, you get the distinct feeling, like, there is no magic here, right? Um, these are just old books. And as you're flipping through the different books, you decide you're just going to grab one, right? And you grab a hold of a book and pull it out to appease this old lady. Um, and she smiles fiercely, like jumping up and down and clapping her hands. Oh, fine selection. Fine selection indeed, Master Zogi. That book is exactly what you need. Perfect. Uh, I think... I think this will come in handy throughout the events, and I will make sure to note that is from here and from you. What is your name? Ugwart. Madam Ugwart, at your service, good divine sir. Thank you, Miss Ugwart. Would you like a blessing? I, indeed, just having you a Peruse the wares of my cart will increase my profitability tenfold, I dare I say. Look, look, everyone here in the crowd. Zogi Poga the Divine has graced my bookshop. Look, he holds a book full of magical secrets, available only here at Ugwarts. Well, Miss Ugwart, it was an absolute pleasure. I hope that your business booms. Indeed. Thank you, Master Zogi. I, I will not take any more of your time. I see your lovely lady friend grows impatient. Indeed. It was a pleasure seeing you. And with that, I, I kind of start to shuffle away with Morgan. All right. Uh, so 
Um, obviously, as, as we're walking away, I'm going to take a glance at the the cover of the book. Is it any? Uh, what's the cover? Like, what's the title? The title is Reskim's Rare Meats. I'm just gonna kind of, huh? I'm sure this will come in handy eventually, and just kind of toss in my backpack. All right, so you move along to the uh, Sunship's berth, um, ready to take your ship to the Green Sun, as you had planned. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and flip a new Sooth card for your arrival at the Sunship berths, and that looks to be the uh, Swan. Swan is a companion card as well, and a member of the Visions family. All right. Um, so you guys make it to the Sunship Births without any other trouble or um problems and you purchase the tickets um to ride the sun ships to the green sun and eagerly um take your seats as the ship is soon departing um and morgan's just making small talk with you chatting back and forth about the days the events and you know her rivalries within the soul society and you know she's just making idle chit chat um passing the time Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I can I also talk with her. And yeah, kind of absolutely. Like, um, I I want to just ask her out of curiosity, like, uh, about the members of the Soul Society and their different achievements. Well, she begins talking about um, like her, her face kind of scrunches up in annoyance um, as she mentions the first person. Um, and she says, Soifon is my nemesis. She's the first student. And it it would be just the greatest thing if I could surpass her and become first disciple myself. You know, within the Soul Society, there's a, this hierarchy of fighters. And, you know, she's trained long and hard, but she can never seems to be able to get the edge up on this Soifon. Um, who is the teacher's pet, and she tends to like to brutalize new students coming in. How long have you? How long have you been training? Nearly a decade. Um, I found the master when I was very young. Um, Yoruchi took me in off the streets in the hollows and began my training at an early age. Um, seeing an apostate like me with no order to fall back on um, and my ability to cage an adversary, she saw a latent talent in me and really groomed me into the woman I am today. You know, meanwhile, some of our other members, our younger members, um, like Miranda, who hangs out at the Geotech Hall of Records, you know, they're just novices really dabbling in the arts. They're not as dedicated as some of the higher ranking members. That is true. That is that is a long time to dedicate your life to, um, especially for your master. Uh, what What's the next level for you when you achieve this higher level? Honestly, I'm looking to expand... Um, perhaps seek out another dojo to train under. I've heard rumors of a master who has uh, mastered the forms and adding such skills to my repertoire might make it uh, possible for me to become the first disciple at the Soul Society. That would be an achievement and you would have an edge up over your nemesis. Indeed, it would be a wonderful um, achievement, but it's a commitment that I just, 
I don't have right now. You know, the Soul Society and I worked on tracking down those clockworks that got away from winners and losers that night. Um, we still have had very little luck in finding them in Saturn, but just the knowledge that they're out there makes my blood boil. I agree. I'm, sh I'm sure they have they have cowered in some corner and are waiting to strike another hopeless, helpless victim. Indeed, indeed. As you two are talking, um, the book that you have in your pack begins to like vibrate and hum, and you suddenly feel a magical energy that you didn't before. Okay. Um, can I kind of tell what type of energy it's radiating, or is it just kind of vibrating? Make a perception check. Okay. To be an eight. You feel um, magic that is linked to the shadow or the gray, um, basically in a lie or an illusion. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll pull it out and uh, kind of try to figure out what's going on. All right, go ahead and make an intellect check. Okay. One. <laughs> you can feel the um, magic of the gray surrounding this book, but you really can't put quite put your finger on what's wrong with this book. And Morgan kind of leans over on your side, looking over your shoulder, and she's like, what a crazy old ha hag of a who, huh? Yes, indeed. I mean, do you really believe that story that you need this stupid book? I'm not sure. I, and there's been times in the past where I've underestimated the objects being given to me, and I've learned my lesson. Um, this this book is has some type of weird energy to it. I can't quite put my tongue on it, and I was hoping that maybe you could give it a look. Huh. She kind of peers at the book intently and um, begins casting the apostate ability counter spell. Um, and a purple glowing energy kind of floods from her hand. A divine uh, indigo spell comes out, um, divining the true nature of the item. And the item shapeshifts in your hand, and I just dealt you an object of power. Um, as the illusion that the item was a book fades away with her counter spell, leaving behind the item's true form. See, Morgan, this is this is a prime example of why you should always kind of. Uh... Work, work out what you have and not take granted. That is amazing. And to think, you plucked that from all of those obscure books. What do you think was up with that lady? I, uh, I have no idea. Saturn works in mysterious ways. Just as you say that, you can hear the whispers in the background, um, and you rest assured knowing that your patron has provided for you once again. All right, a short while later, the uh, Sunship pulls up to the green, um, which it, it, it doesn't have a uh, manifested dock, so to speak, like some of the other suns and the gate wardens. Instead, the sunship pulls up to a tree canopy, um, as the green is really uh, 
collection of trees. It's like the entire realm is covered in forest and nature and stuff. Um, so it pulls up and then lets you off. And Morgan looks out and she just it is breathless at the beauty of the green sun. Um, and she looks around admiring the flowers and the fauna and the different nature spirits that come and go. Of course, the gate guardian for the green allows free passage into the green um, at this time. So you're able to pass right into the realm um, without having to pay a due or anything like that. Taking in awe and woe, I'm going to ask Morgan if she's ever actually been to the green sun. Yes, once or twice before, but I was much younger, and every time I come, I just, I can't believe the beauty of this place. It sure does hold a beauty. It's qu quite unreal. So where would you like to take me on this fine sun, Zogi? Um, I've actually, uh, I've heard rumor of, uh, this, uh, really beautiful garden, uh, here on the green sun. And I was hoping to start there and maybe, um, see where it goes from there. Oh, I, I would love to take a stroll in a garden. Can you tell me more about it? Uh, yeah, it's called the, uh, Fiddler's Garden. Um, it, all from rumor, it has very beautiful plants and absolute amazing music who's played by a fiddler. Um, Excellent. I can't wait to see what, what secrets there are to this garden. I mean, a garden in the green, it's got to be a thing of beauty. Absolutely. All right, go ahead and take a um, intelligence check to navigate the green um, and find your way to the Fiddler's Garden. Four. All right. All right. Um, you navigate through the forest, um, stopping here and there as Morgan likes to um, look at the surroundings and kind of take in everything. Um, she's not really in a rush to get to the garden. She's more sightseeing than anything else. Um, and it's at that point, at one of these ventures where you stop, where a Durantix storms out of the thick brush. Its pinchers covered in blood. It starts speaking in a language that you can actually understand, and it begs you for help, saying it's been ensorcelled with a lust for violence. It can't control itself, and it hopes that perhaps some type of magic can remove the compulsion. Okay. Um... And a Durantix is a human-sized insect, uh, that lives in the green. They're omnivores, but they prefer meat. Okay. They're like a giant praying mantis with like pinchers and stingers. What kind of looks like a human? <laughs> well, it's just human sized. It's still oh. an insect. It, it's human sized though, so it's like a huge man sized praying mantis with a stinger and pinchers. Oh, that, that's not intimidating. <laughs> uh, yeah. Surprisingly, I can I can comprehend and understand what it's saying, and I'm going to attempt to try uh, my cleansing spell on it. All right, go ahead and cast. And I'll take the uh, two sorcery it takes. All right. And go ahead and roll two dice for that. All right, and I'll push uh, two beans. To make it level four. All right. And you have the uh, 
sorcery one, right? That allows yeah. you to push multiple. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a pair of sixes, which is enough to remove the uh, curse plaguing the this insect. Um, and it kind of chitters happily as the curse uh, fades away in like a puff of smoke. Um, and you can't tell whether it's smiling or it's happy because it's kind of got like bug mouth. Um, and the eyes don't help either. <laughs> right, right. And two black eyes like a praying mantis head. So you really can't tell from facial expressions, but from the voice, it sounds pleased. Um, thank you, kind Vizle. I That had been plaguing me, vexing me for weeks. I, I couldn't kill another thing. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I swear, from this day forth, I will be a vegetarian and eat only plant life. Go you. Go you. Uh, how did you even get in this predicament? This is such an... Odd occasion. A Vizlay. I, my only hope was finding another one who had the power to remove such a curse. But Vizlay found here in the green. I don't even know what I did, but they spouted a curse, and that was it. A bloodlust overcame me, and I just I couldn't help myself but to gorge. Unfortunately, that sounds true. The Visley, they're powerful, and they use their power in the wrong ways, unfortunately. Now, I think the right thing for me to do is to actually travel to Saturine and find the Visley who wronged me. Do, do you have a name, or...? No, but I have an uncanny ability to recall someone's face i i will hunt them down thank you thank you what is your name uh my name is zogi paga zogi paga the divine i've heard of you you've been here before to the green once uh, a very long time ago i but i have heard of zogi paga the divine it was a real honor and a treat. I'll look you up when I'm on Saturn. Um, I wanted to attempt to try to do something. I'm not sure if it will work, but... Okay, uh, go for it. I'm going to try to offer aid in helping him find the person who did him wrong. And I want to know if I can use um, my windows to the soul in combination of him thinking about the, the face and... The, how the person looks and kind of get a picture of what the person looks like and see if they are if I recognize them or not alright go ahead and make a roll so it's going to be two dice right yep two dice alright so that's going to be a, uh, a, a 10 and a 4 A ten and a four. All right. Um, so you um, recognize the face immediately as Howard Sharp, the fourth degree apostate who hosts the Legion, um, somebody that you know quite well. Yikes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll just kind of tell him that I, I have no idea, uh, where this person would be found and, uh, doesn't, um, it's not too much of a reminder for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> With that, um, the Durantix takes off, uh, disappears into the foliage and, Morgan kind of smiles at you and just says, you, you just can't help yourself, can you? No, I can't. I just, when people are in need, I I have to try my best to, to help them. I suppose that's why I, uh, I pledged to come take a vacation after all. 
a vacation, huh? A romantic getaway to a garden is what Zogi Poga considers to be a fitting vacation from helping people. And yet here you are, you're still helping everybody you come across. I know, I, su I suppose it's a curse. All right. You continue on your way, um, trading philosophical barbs with Morgan until you come to the Fiddler's Garden. Um, and as you arrive at the Fiddler's Garden, um, you're greeted by an expanse of just a dazzling array of colors. Um, there's different plants and flowers, there's vegetables, there's all types of growths that you've never even seen before. There's these giant mushrooms that come out of the ground and burst into multi-colored um, mushroom caps. And Morgan is instantly enthralled by the dazzling array of colors and grabs you by the arm eagerly and begins weaving and winding through the garden, uh, pointing out different things. Um, and as you make your way through the garden, you hear the song of the fiddler. Yeah, so I'm waving and taking awe as, as I, she's obviously taken on. This place is very different than Saturine. It's very intriguing. And uh, the sound of the, the fiddler's music just kind of even adds another level of just joy because it, he plays be very beautiful music. I'm going to take a minute and just kind of listen to uh, the music he plays. As you stay and listen to the music, you hear you hear the music getting closer, and from a short ways down the path, from behind a mushroom, the fiddler appears, um, playing his song. He looks up and smiles, um, and says, "Ah, welcome, visitors to the garden. How odd and unique for such a day. What brings you here?" Just, we just came to the visit. Uh, what the green sun has to offer, and. I've heard very high of your garden. Oh, yes. Many come seeking the herbs of my garden. Many, many. However, you're not permitted to take anything from the garden unless you give me your secret name. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm ready to part with my own secret name. I, I have many others to offer, but mine is not one. And what about the fair lass, who seems so enchanted by the beauty of the garden? Surely she'd like a gift. And Morgan, you can see her kind of considering it. Um, what do you do? Uh, yeah, I'll kind of stick by uh, what I said, not offering my soul or a secret name. And hopefully she doesn't uh, have to feel obligated to. I'll, I'll offer the... Um, the fiddler, if you'd be willing to take a more po more powerful secret name, uh, of uh, a red sun guardian, not guardian, um, a red sun, uh, one of the uh, red suns, uh, bounty hunters. Ooh, that is interesting. And how, perchance, did you come by such valuable information? I, uh, I just have a way of uh, secrets, I suppose. <laughs> and so do I. In fact, I will trade you for the secret name you possess. I will give you two of these herbs that will allow you to breathe underwater for a day. Think of how enchanting a stroll you could take with the ability to breathe underwater. You know, I, I, will, I will take upon your generous offer. Thank you, Mr. Fiddler. Oh, indeed. Thank you. And he produces two herbs um, and kind of gestures for you to take them and put them under your tongue. Okay. I'll take, uh, I'll hand one to Morgan as well. And, and she'll take one under her tongue. And as you place it under your tongue, you can feel the magic take hold. Um, and you can feel air coming in through your neck as if you had gills, but there are no gills there. 
And that lasts for an hour, correct? Uh, it lasts until sunset. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah, so I'm sure uh, the garden is very large, so I want to con continue to stroll through the garden with Morgan and uh, kind of watch her as she um, finds awe in the, the garden because I, I find uh, beauty in that. All right. Um, the fiddler doesn't, like, take off entirely. He always stays with an eye shot to make sure that you're not taking anything from the garden or anything like that. And you explore around for quite some time, um, just looking at the various things. Um, and, you know, as she looks at fauna and flowers and different things, um, it's kind of surprising to see the girly side of this fighter come out because um, she had always presented herself as this tough, badass type woman. But here in this garden, she's you see a more innocent, playful girl kind of emerging. Um, and as you walk about the garden, um, the fiddler continues to play a song, and you kind of feel yourself um, becoming one with the garden on a spiritual level. Awesome. Uh, looking around, is there uh, an audience, you know, is there other people here kind of strolling as well as we are, or is it just kind of us? No, it's just kind of you at the moment. And um, as I said, you, you begin feeling uh, a connection to the garden and something deeper kind of resonating inside of you. Um, why don't you go ahead and take a perception check? Uh, wait, does the card give any bonuses? Uh, I don't believe uh, so. Let's see. The no. current card is the Harvesting Spider. Um, so you just want to compare the family. Um, so the family on that card is... I believe that's Mysteries. Okay. We're not getting a bonus off that, so it's just going to be a flat eight. All right, an eight. Hold on one second while I look it up here. All right, um, you learn the cantrip Verdancy, V-E-R-D-A-N-C-Y. Okay. Um, from listening to his song. And what that cantrip does, it costs one sorcery, um, and it allows plants in a small area to shrug off disease and grow well for the next week or so, even without food or water. What does it do one more time, sorry? It allows plants in a small area to shrug off disease and grow well for the next week or so, even without food or water. Oh, perfect. And you can find that on page 26 of the way under cantrips. Okay. Uh, and actually, I'm wrong. They cost nothing to use a cantrip. Um, they require an action to activate, but they have no sorcery cost. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. All right. And again, that's because as you became one with the garden and you heard the fiddler's tune, that that cantrip kind of fell into your brain, so to speak. Pretty sweet. Um, as a uh, kind of like, a, I, I guess a respect factor, I'll start. I'll can I use that? To kind of help flourish the garden, even more so. Absolutely. All right. So. 
Morgan is impressed with your uh, ability as you, you know, let loose this cantrip that you just seemingly picked out of, up out of nowhere, and the garden responds favorably to it. And she kind of lets loose a girlish, like, giggle um, at what you're able to do. Mm. And she just, you know, kind of swoons a little bit. Um, and again, you're you're seeing a side of her that you are had didn't even know existed. You know, this tough woman is just melting before your eyes into more of a uh, normal girl, if you will. Um, and as you guys finish strolling through the garden, um, you emerge on the other side, um, and there, slightly in the distance, um, you can see a lake uh, down below, um, a pristine, crystalline lake. Um, and you recognize it as the Lake of Lost Tongues. Perfect. I'll kind of like start. Um, I'll just kind of grab uh, Morgan's hand and just kind of start running in a, towards the lake. All right. I'm going to go ahead and flip another Sooth card. And that is going to be the uh, Enticing Jewel. Now, unlike Fair. Okay, so last week that drew all bad cards. You are getting quite a run of good cards here. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no complaints. <laughs> like I, I felt bad for Aso. He was getting the tar kicked out of him, but um, so far you are like nailing this gate. Um, every single oh. card kit flip has been great. <laughs> All right, as you run down towards the water with um, Morgan by your side, uh, she kind of veers a little bit and heads straight towards the water, ignoring the populace of people that are living around the lake. Um, she begins veering directly towards the water, and she peels her leather jacket off and sends it flying behind her um, and dives right into the lake. Oh, geez. Uh yeah, I'm wearing a fashionable suit, so I'm gonna kind of like, uh, take off like um, the the jacket, the suit jacket, uh, take off like the uh little collar that I have, and kind of just take off my shirt and just dive in after. Take off my shoes, obviously. Um, uh, much to your surprise, she doesn't return to the surface. Um, and as you follow her down, you remember the leaf that allowed you to breathe underwater, and you see her walking. Um, along the bottom of the lake as she's just exploring the underneath in awe and fascination. And swimming around her is a school of beautiful um, rainbow-colored fish that just seem to swirl around her as if she were a mermaid. And the look of awe on her face makes everything worthwhile for this one moment. Um, as she turns and kind of smiles at you and gives you a little slight wave pointing at the rainbow-colored fish swimming about yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna kind of like uh, swim over to her and kind of gr grab her by uh, grab her by the hand and start like dancing her around and have like twirling her as the school of fish are circling us. Uh, go ahead and make a dice roll, um, and we'll make that a movement check. Okay. I will actually push uh, a movement. All right. This being successful. Um, and does the the family uh the card uh family is notion or no? Yeah, I gain a bonus off that. So is it gonna be a yep. plus one? It is a plus okay. one. So that will be a plus two in my roll. <laughs> two. Um, you kind of struggle in the water a little bit, be be performing less gracefully than you would have liked. Um. But it draws a laugh from her, and, and she seems genuinely amused and taken back by your attempts. Um, and as you two are playing under the water, a creature kind of emerges from the shadowy depths and swims in your direction, and you realize that you are staring at a genuine uh, green sun mermaid um, who is like a... Um, not a mermaid like you would picture. She's definitely got human features to her, um, but she's all fish, um, but absolutely beautiful. Um, and she swims up and 
stays like five feet away from you, like eyeing you curiously as it as if to say what are you doing in my home <laughs> yeah so um i don't want to make any threatening presence like i'm just kind of there to just enjoy what the green sun has to offer and i'm not gonna uh i don't want her to feel as if her presence is threatened either so i'm just kind of to each their own type of deal Go ahead and make an interaction check. Okay. I uh, do gain a bonus off persuasion. Is that going to be in... Uh, yeah, back? because you're trying to persuade her that you really don't meet her any harm here in what you're doing. So I'll okay. give it to you. So that will be a... Uh, I will also push a rank of interaction, making that a total of a plus three. Sounds like a deal. Uh, and you're counting the positive card, right? Yes. Okay. Ooh, you nailed Love. that one. <laughs> uh, so the mermaid, like Green Sun Mermaid, smiles at both of you, and um, she waves for you to follow her and beckons um, for you to descend deeper under the lake, um, waving her arm behind her, um, again, beckoning for you to follow after her. Okay. Morgan kind of has an excited look on her face, and she looks at you like, "Should we?" Um, kind of. So I'm, I'm assuming I kind of vision it as like a big lake, and the, in the bottom there's kind of like a, a crack or a beam that goes down deeper. Is that correct here? Or... Yeah, that's accurate. Um, from here, can I see? Does it get like noticeably darker, or? Yes. Yes, it does get noticeably darker the deeper you go. Like, you, you can no longer see the green light of the green sun above you. Mm -hmm. um, and it is getting noticeably darker. Okay, yeah, I'll cast my uh, wings. Um, not in the sense of movement, but in the sense of uh, just lighting the area. So that's going to be a four. All right, go just ahead and guess. spend your four sorcery. And then are you going to follow the mermaid? Yeah, I'll take her by the hand and uh, take Morgan by the hand and kind of uh, lead her downwards. All right. So you follow behind this mermaid as she swims and descends into this ravine. Um, and the deeper you go, the colder the water starts getting. But um, curiosity drives you forward. And as you get to the bottom of this um, ravine under the lake, uh, you come to a spot where, that is filled with like these oversized clam shells. Um, and the mermaid smiles at you and she touches a, this pinkish clam shell and it opens up to reveal a wealth of just treasures um, and items just strewn about. Um, it looks like things that had been lost or discarded perhaps, or things that the mermaid had collected. Um, and she kind of gestures towards the pile of treasures. And Morgan tentatively reaches out, and the mermaid nods again, eagerly pointing to the assembled collection. Okay. Um, how dense is the collection? Would you say there's like a lot of stuff here, or can I kind of tell what's in there? Oh, there is a lot of stuff. Um, it is a pile of stuff that she has dragged here from all over the lake um and you know some of it looks like junk but some of it is definitely like shiny and glittering there's gold there's some pearls um and you'd really have to uh take a test to see if you find something particular in there yeah um so zogi will take upon the offer and um Look for something in the best interest for Morgan. So I'm kind of looking for a nice necklace or uh, something that would appeal for her. If if uh, obviously I can't find anything, then I'm just willing to take whatever. All right, go ahead and make a roll. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be perception. Okay. That's going to be a plus one because of the card. It's going to be a four. All right, now I'm go ahead and I dealt you an ephemera object that you pull from the pile. 
Okay. Are you going to give that item to Morgan or? I don't know what it is because I dealt it to you. I don't know. I don't even have yeah. any clue what it is. <laughs> um. Yeah, I suppose. I, I, I'm on my limit anyways, so the only thing I can do is give out an ephemera. So yeah, I'll pass this um this fear. That kind of just drew my attention. Haha. <laughs> so reaching amongst the uh pearls and whatnot, you distinguish a glass sphere that actually has magical value and significance. Um and handing it to Morgan, she smiles, um profusely, uh, seemingly very pleased uh, with the gift. Why don't you go ahead and roll an interaction check? And I'm going to give you plus four on it for the level of the gift you just gave her. Okay. Um, is it a persuasion check, or is this going to be a, just a... Nope, just raw interaction. Okay. Um, so that's going to be a plus six, because also the card family. I'm going to roll it. Or plus five, sorry. Yep, plus five. Um, That's going to be an eight. Yep. All right. Um, so Morgan seems to become, like, seems to be overcome with um, joy at the gift, and she kind of slips it away um, into her pocket, and she grabs you by the ears and pulls you close and gives you a kiss on the lips um, and kind of blushes bashfully and swims off um, up out of the ravine. He shoots, he scores. <laughs> yeah, Zuzogi obviously being guy kind of fluttered and not used to feeling a level of security and love. He just kind of sits there for a minute and kind of awed, like, wait, this girl just kissed me, you know, what is this? And uh, see a swim off and kind of like uh, cat chases the mouse type of deal. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do another card flip. And that is the uh, compelling voice. All right, interesting. Um, so you follow her up and out of the ravine, and she swim at this point all the way back to the surface um, and has emerged uh, to the beach. And as you emerge yourself from the water, you can see many of the local villagers kind of starting to gather around her. Um, none of them have voices and they're not speaking, but they're all trying to get her attention. Um, and you can tell that the handful of villagers here are completely uh, fascinated by Morgan um, as she kind of pads her way up out of the water and onto the shore. Uh, looking around, can I kind of judge what they're gesturing? Because I'm sure they're using a lot of hand movement and uh, nonverbal uh, communication. Oh, yes. Um, they're all trying to get her attention individually. Um, so they're making like waving motions and some of them are smiling and, um, you know, they're obviously interested in the beautiful woman who has just walked out of the water. <laughs> oh yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of follow her out after the water and obviously go back to where her belongings were dropped with her. Um, as you make your way back to where your belongings were dropped, uh, the crowd of villagers uh, follows intently, each one of them kind of waving at her and trying to get her attention. And she's smiling and, you know, she introduces herself and she introduces you. Um, and they all nod in agreement, but nobody really vocalizes or answers anything. Um, And you return to your pile of stuff, and she retrieves her jacket. Um, she looks at you, and she's like, what an interesting group of people. 
And, and indeed, uh, the Green Sun has offered so much already. I this is so compelling to find out more. You know, the mermaid down there was absolutely stunning and very generous to us. All right. Um, the gathered villagers um, begin like jumping up and down and pointing to you and pointing to her, and then they they point to a shrine that's off in the distance. Um, and you can see there's a path that kind of leads from the village uh, up through the woods to where this shrine is. Okay. Um, kind of looking around, can I, can I, um, is this more of like a thatch, like type of like tribal village or is this kind of more, a little bit more like modern buildings just? No, it's much more of a like thatch work fishing village where these guys are more primitive than like technological. Okay. So there's like a, a bunch of like tanning, um, tannings and like fishing and traps oh yeah type of deal yeah oh yeah they have like sk animal skins handing hanging out tanning under the sun and they have you know lots of fishing nets lots of like fresh fish that are out that have been caught from the lake um it's definitely more of a more rural uh rustic type community i wouldn't go so far as to say savages but think more you know pre-civilization yeah yeah yeah, because they they obviously have a level of like comprehension and yeah, so I'll I'll kind of follow up the beaten path, Morgan, and kind of head towards this uh, shrine. All right, why don't you go ahead and take a perception check as you are um, navigating the path and following the way the way to the shrine. It's gonna be a seven. Oh, wait, uh, the card family changed. It's going to be a six. All right. Um, so you make your way to the shrine without issue. Uh, navigating the path, you know, it's well marked, and you can see that it's well traveled, uh, like the uh, villagers from the fishing village come up and forth uh, up and down this trail all the time. So you're able to see it's easily marked despite the rampant growth of the green. Uh, the villagers take excellent care to keep this path clear. Um, and as you approach the um, shrine in the background, you begin to see familiar elements to this shrine. Um, and the closer you get, you can see these large black panther-like um, statues leading up to the shrine. Um, what, what is this familiar to? Um, you recognize from your prior journeys here that those panthers are, represent the goddess Bestet, or the demigod Bestet. Gotcha. Um, the one that Solomon serves. Right, okay. Correct. I remember that now. Yeah, so, kind of, this is all kind of cool, and I kind of keep going up with the tribe, you know, kind of taking an awe and woe of the very intricate work on the Panthers um, and the other uh, greenery around. Morgan seems completely enchanted, and she kind of skips about the uh, steps to the monument, uh, finding her way up uh, the monument, she kind of vaults over a statue and up onto the uh, rock wall that leads the way. And she kind of, you know, somersaults across an open gap and then does a cartwheel showing off an impressive away, array of both gymnastics and balance as she kind of plays along this walkway, um, showing an extreme amount of agility. As you guys reach the top of the summit where the temple is, or uh, monument is, uh, you find a stone building that's uh, covered 
it's a like it's a triangular shaped building um, made of stone that's covered in like a thick green moss that's growing up everywhere around it. Um, and the doorway is open but well maintained, and there are two torches there, kind of marking the entrance to the temple. Um, yeah, I'm kind of looking around, looking at the villagers, looking at uh, Morgan. Does she seem intrigued to go in, or...? She does. She seems fascinated by it all. Um, despite her showing off along the rock wall and whatnot, um, she seems genuinely interested in everything about this place. And the villagers kind of stop following you about halfway up, allowing you and her to come up here on your own. Okay. Yeah, so um, obviously taking notice of her having joy and you know um, genuine happiness here, I'm going to kind of lead in with her as well. All right. Um, wow, that couldn't have been a more perfect card flip. <laughs> I know, I was just thinking that. <laughs> That is the cat, uh, which translates literally um, as one of the outcomes is a cat, an important cat takes interest. <laughs> as you're walking into the temple dedicated to a cat god, uh, couldn't couldn't be better timing. <laughs> True. <laughs> um. So you lead your way and <laughs> lead your way into the temple um, with Morgan at your side, and she's being um, stoic and quiet, respecting the holy ground that you guys are standing on. Um, she stopped showing off at this point and is just instead looking around in awe. Uh, you enter a wide open area uh, of this temple where there are different shrines, all um, seemingly uh, set to the goddess Bestet. Um, and there, sitting atop a shrine, is like a caretaker um, who is wearing a golden cat-type mask as she um, sits at a altar-type thing lighting candles. Okay, um, does she quite take notice of us, or are we just kind of off? kind of roaming around, taking all of the different statues noted, uh, noted through here? She really hasn't taken notice of you yet. Um, I mean, she's there, and she she obviously recognizes that you're there, um, but she really hasn't responded, so to speak. Okay. Um, kind of looking around, can I, um, is there offerings that have been placed here yet, or...? Uh, yeah, there are multiple in front of each shrine. There is like a um, wooden bowl, if you will, like a large wooden saucer where the fisher folk have placed different offerings. Um, and you can see there's like beads and there's seashells and there's uh, fish and there's skins and stuff like that um, assorted collected before each shrine. There's a different type of collection of items that the villagers have gathered. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to kind of just, like, um, look at the different, um, uh, statues with Morgan and just kind of work our way up to where the, uh, golden figure would be eventually. All right, uh, give me just one second here. Yeah, take your time. Okay. Um, as you approach, the woman behind the desk kind of looks up, and you can see two panthers under the altar kind of come out from the side and look at you, and they have these green, emerald green eyes. And she looks up, and she's a dark-skinned woman, uh, again, with a gold cat mask um, over her face. 
She smiles and kind of nods at you stoically. Okay. Yeah, I'll just kind of uh, nod back, um, kind of looking at her. Do I get, uh, does she have the same uh, look as the other uh, tribal members uh, at the base, or does she kind of have her own appearance and uh, oh, no. take? She has her own appearance, um, and I'm going to pop that up to you now. She is definitely not one of the tribe, if you will. Um, she appears to be a priestess of some sort. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we've kind of taken a look at all the, the statues that are here to offer, right? Yep, you've looked around at the various statues, which all seem to be feline in nature. I mean, obviously, this is dedicated to a cat goddess. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're kind of at the end towards her, uh, you said she had a desk, right? Yeah, she has, like, an altar-type desk that she's sitting behind, you know. Um, she was obviously working on something, um, but you can't quite make out what that is. The two panthers that come out from underneath the desk don't seem aggressive. Rather, they seem majestic. Um, you know, they don't seem to be growling or snarling at you. They just seem to be eyeing you curiously. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I'll kind of get, like, um, I'm pretty much at the desk at this point, I'd, I'd assume, and I'll kind of just, like, uh, announce to her that, you know, this place is absolutely stunning, and the, um, the, the artwork and the statues here are beautiful. She smiles, um... And greets you warmly. Uh, hello and welcome to one of the temples of the goddess Bestet. What brings you so far out into the green, good Bisley? Um, I was uh, I was actually recommended a vacation um, here to the Green Sun, and I decided that I uh, would take upon the offer. Um, and I, as I perused the Green Sun, I uh, was brought here to the the lake um, where the tribe mates. Uh, ushered me up here. You and your companion have impeccable timing. It is almost divine perchance that you have come to the temple on this very day. What makes the, uh, the timing so impeccable? Why, I am in need of a task, and, and a task to be accomplished by a Bisley by some renown, I, I would take it, um, traveling all the way here to the Green Sun. Tell me, would you be interested in helping the goddess Bestet? Um, I mean, what task do you need to be done? There is a creature from the Green that I need returned. I'm afraid it's been taken from the green sun, and I fear the longer it stays away from the green sun, the more dangerous it will become. Okay. Um, what, what creature was stolen from this place? Well, they're known as a virtuous lover. Uh, this particular one is a female named Ivy. Uh, uh, yes, I uh, unfortunately do know of Ivy. <laughs> Fortuitous indeed. You must convince Ivy to return to the Green Sun, where she belongs. Uh, I'm going to kind of look over at... Um... Morgan and kind of see if her interest is peaked through this because uh, after all we did pledge to just come here and relax and have a vacation. Uh, Morgan cannot contain her curiosity anymore and she 
asks immediately, what do you mean she could become more dangerous? Atema sighs and um, seems reluctant to answer, but eventually she does, um, as if she doesn't really want to give you the truth, uh, but she knows that in order to get you to engage in her quest that she has to be up front. Um, so she puts her hand on one of the panther's head and she says, well, unfortunately, Ivy was sealed away in a maze because she tends to be jealous, compulsive, and vindictive. She'll be fine as long as she feels loved, but the moment she doesn't feel loved anymore, she'll turn vicious. Her plants, her ivy blossoms will grow and it'll smother anything that, wrong, that she feels has wronged her. And the longer she stays away from the green sun, the more likely she is to replicate. I'm sure that me and the, my companion here um, could absolutely do this for you because uh, I have witnessed this uh, jealousy uh, overcome her, and I'd be more than willing to uh, do a task for somebody as high as a standard as you are. Excellent. I, I do not ask you to take on this dangerous task without promise of reward. In return, the goddess Bestet will empower me to grant upon you one spell from the green. That is a very generous offer. I, I thank you and Bestet very much. Thank you. I... I eagerly look forward to Ivy's return to the green. She may not recognize it, but this is her home. I I agree. I think Ivy uh, belongs here with her other kin. And with that, um, obviously taking on the task, I'm going to kind of usher towards Morgan to uh, be very be prompt on it. Morgan agrees and nods, and um, not knowing what else to say, she kind of starts backing away from the altar, um, and the cats go back to laying down beneath the um, altar as you guys kind of back away. The further you get from the altar um, and back towards the entrance to the temple, um, Morgan finally speaks up, um, kind of whispering over to you. Um, Isn't that the girl that you guys brought back from that maze? Unfortunately, yeah. Who would have thought that she such an nice young lady would be so dangerous. I know. I, I I believe it. Looks can be very deceiving at times, and unfortunately it appears as if this is one of those times. Well, maybe it's best for us to find her and convince her to come home. I, I agree. I I know exactly where she, uh, where she should be at least. Um, a, a good friend of mine is letting her stay at uh, her house, so I mean that's a start for us, I suppose. <laughs> Indeed, but as dangerous as she could be, I didn't get the feeling like we had to leave right away. So you're hoping to stay for a little bit longer. I thought we could at least enjoy the stroll back to the Sunships. I I agree. I think we could take one last glance around the lake and uh, take a pleasure walk on our way back to the Sunships. I think it was a very great idea. All 
All right. Um, as you head back uh, through the woods, um, you know, you stop here and there finding uh, different things um, that draw her attention. And again, she's looking at flowers and fauna. Um, she stops to pick a purple flower um, and plans to bring it with her. She puts it behind her ear. Um, and she seems to be genuinely having a really great time. Uh, why don't you go ahead and take an interaction check? Okay. Um, am I going to get any bonuses off this? Uh, due to the fact that she is having a very good time, and uh, so far the date has gone very successful. Yeah, I'm going to give you a plus four. Okay. And... Um... It looks like the card... Oh, wait, where are we at for cards? Uh, you're back at the beginning. I just drew the misunderstood uh, beast. Okay. Um, that has a plus on uh, green. I don't know if that would also take an effect here or not. Only if it was a green spell. Okay. I didn't know if, uh, because we were on the green sun, if it would like um, help in this situation. Uh, but I will be more than happy to take the plus four. It's going to be an eight. All right. You passed again. <laughs> so um, she's just completely enthralled. Um, you can tell that she has had a wonderful time as you guys head back. Um, and she kind of enwraps her arm with yours. And she's pointing out different birds and different little creatures and whatnot. And as you guys turn a corner... Um, she points to like a mushroom cap that's a deep, deep, dark purple on top. Um, and she just picks out the color and she says, that shade of purple, it just catches my eye. And as soon as she says that and points at it, the mushroom cap rises, revealing a creature beneath it. <coughs> um, and you recognize the creature as a lycosymphilium. Uh, it's a mushroom that cares not for the desires or wiles of humans or really any other things. Um, it has a singular job on the green sun, and that is to continue the cycle of life, namely through destruction. <laughs> and this uh, mushroom creature looks at you and begins charging instantly. Okay. Um obviously taking a protective nature over Morgan, I'm going to kind of like um, um, usher her, uh, kind of step forward uh, and draw my sword in hopes to um, stop this creature from doing damage to her. All right. Um, the creature comes in and um It stops short of you, and roots spring from underneath this, like, mushroom man's legs and dive into the ground, and they kind of tunnel and burrow towards you. Um, and then they spring up underneath the pair of you. Go ahead and take a resistance check. Okay. Four. All right. Um, you said that was a four? Yeah. Okay. So, um, the roots come up at your feet and like a musky, uh, spray of spores come up out of them. Um, and they cause like faint hallucinations and the forest kind of melts and, um, fades away around you as the hallucinations stick in, uh, appear in your mind. Um, and you're going to take two Vex to your perception pool, which is basically a minus one that I can use later. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do? Um, chop it in half. All right, so go ahead and strike at the creature. Okay. Um, so let me uh, just refresh what my sword is.
All right, so this is going to be a level three sword with a damage of four. That's going to be eight as my roll. All right, and that's going to hit it easily. And what's the damage on the sword? Four. All right, so it's going to suffer a wound. Um, as your sword sinks into its mushroom-type body in it, um, let's loose a funny, like, whale, um, and it swings back at Morgan um, with a heavy, ham-fisted arm, um, catching her um, with a strike, and suddenly she begins to age rapidly. Um, growing older before your eyes. Okay. Um, in that situation, is there anything I could do to prevent that attack going through? Whether that is taking uh, the damage No, she or... failed the dodge. Okay. Based on their stats, she was unable to dodge or resist his attack. Okay. And I went ahead and flipped a uh, another card. And that is going to be the lucky coin. Um, and as that card is flipped, um, the you hear the motion coming through the brush from of like the villagers from the um, lake come moving through the woods, and they come they emerge instantly with spears. And they start throwing spears at this large um, mushroom-type creature, and they stick on the top of its mushroom head, um, and it wails in protest as they launch their spears in a volley. What are you going to do? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go for, like, an empowered attack. I'm gonna, uh, I still have my wings active, so I'm going to kind of fly up and then thrust as hard down as I can to chop it clean in half. All right, go ahead and make a roll. And I'm going to go ahead and have you uh, say that's an enhanced roll, so go ahead and roll two dice. Okay. okay. So that's going to be a 6 and a 11. All right, and that hits with ease, doing the final wound of damage to the uh, Mushroom Man. You, you kind of come down with a chop and split it in half, um, from its head coming straight down, the thing falls into two flaps. Um, and you turn in time to see Morgan aging, and now she looks like she's 50 or uh, 60 years old at this point. Um, I'm going to kind of look at um, the, uh, the tribe um, and aid, because um, I'm sure they've dealt with this before, and kind of motion to them that I need help. Uh, one of the hunters from the tribe jumps up and down and begins pointing back in the direction of the uh, garden. Okay, I'll head back to the... I'll uh, kind of grab her and start uh, heading towards the garden. Uh, approaching the garden, you again hear the song coming from um, the tender of the garden, and... Um, go ahead and take a perception check to see if you can find him. Zero. <laughs> Hold on, I need a card flip. All right, that's the incriminating skull. All right, um, so you're unable to tell where the music's coming from as you run with Morgan behind you, and she's starting to slow, and you're getting really, really concerned. Um, and it almost seems like out of nowhere, 
you run smack dab into um, a red-haired woman that you recognize from a prior adventure with Lucas, the melodic maiden. Hello, hello, miss. Um, I, I need your help. I, I, I'm a friend of Lucas. You know, you remember the whole. You helped me once, and, and now I help you. But I need your help again. But I need your help. If, if you could please be so kind. Go ahead and make a uh, interaction check. Okay. Um, is this a persuasion check or is this just a basic check? Absolutely. Basic okay. Yep. Uh, so that'll be a plus one, and checking on the card family. Um, it is not my family so it's just gonna be a plus one and i will push uh, a beam of interaction all right go ahead and roll three all right the melodic maiden kind of doesn't really respond um to you so to speak with words um but she looks on morgan and she has a very sad face um and then she reaches down into the garden and she produces a flower um, and hands it to you and gestures to Morgan. Okay. Um, at this point, is Morgan, um, is she, will she be fine to take it her own? Like, if I just hand it to her? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to kind of hand it over to her and kind of uh, pray okay. that the melodic is here to help us. All right, she puts it in her mouth, um, and this particular uh, herb allows a person to age backwards for a period of time, and you immediately begin to see her growing younger again, um, and can only be grateful for to the melodic maiden for the help. And she begins singing her song once more um, and turns to walk away, and as she's singing her song and walking away, you begin to hear the fiddler's song coming from the opposite direction. And the fiddler walks into the path, looks at you, and with a scowl says, you've taken from the garden. We did not take from the garden. Uh, the red-haired uh, red woman did. I'm going to go ahead and give you another card flip, and that is the Lost Star. All right. Um, he looks at you, and he looks at her. And he yells to her that she needs to stop taking stuff from his garden and tend her own. And she kind of smiles, continues on her song, and fades away into the garden. Um, and he looks back at you and yells, I'll not forget this. You did take from the garden. And though you didn't offer up a, another secret name, I know, and she knows, and just get out of here. He's very frustrated. Okay. Um, taking. I'm not going to take this moment for granted and kind of um, hurry out with uh, Morgan. All right. Uh, by the time you get back to the Sunship, Morgan is back to her normal age. Um and despite the wrinkle in the end of the uh, adventure that you had, she seems in fairly good spirits. Go ahead and take an interaction check. Okay. Um, am I going to gain a bonus on this one? Yeah, I'm going to cut the bonus down to two, though. Okay. Uh, so is persuasion being used here? Yes, it is. So this will be a three. So that's going to be a nine. Despite 
all of the, uh, despite the ending, she seems entirely enthralled. And again, once again, she takes your arm in hers um, and she kind of leans her head on your shoulder as you stroll back to the entrance to the green sun. Um, and she says, you know, I had a really good time. We should definitely do this again. I I absolutely agree. And, you know, all jokes aside, even as an old woman, you're very beautiful. And I'm going to kind of, like, uh, give her a light peck on the cheek. Um, so as you return uh, to the uh, berth where the sunship is, um, once again, you are greeted um, by different people boarding and leaving the sun ship, entering the green sun. And as you stand um, getting ready to embark, a figure approaches um, that is exiting the ship, and you recognize Pippin from the shop. One more time. I am sorry. You recognize the figure of Pippin from... Pippin's paraphernalia uh, exiting the sunship. Pippin, it's very nice to see you. Zogi, it has been a while since you've been to the shop, and who is your lovely friend? Uh, this is Miss Morgan. And I kind of uh, introduce Morgan to Pippin. Oh, Morgan, you should come by the shop. Pippin's paraphernalia. We never have what you're looking for, only what you need. Morgan smiles and assures her that she'll take the time to visit the shop. And Pippin turns back to you and kind of looks at you quizzically and says, What brings you back to the green sun, Zogi? Vacation. A nice place to take vacation. The natural, fresh air the beauty of the place. Why, tell me, Morgan, is that your flower you picked? And Morgan kind of nods her head and takes the flower, the purple blossom from behind her ear and kind of gestures forward for Pippin to smell it. And Pippin is super excited um, at seeing this flower. And she's like, Zogi, Morgan, I hate to be to impose upon you, but please tell me, is there anything I can do to take this flower off your hands? Uh, to be honest, that would not be uh, my decision. Uh, Morgan picked this flower, and it, it's uh, her flower, so I'll leave that up to her. All right. Uh, Morgan kind of looks at you and she's like, well, really, it was Zogi's idea to bring me here. And it's just a flower. I mean, while it's beautiful, I really don't have a need for it. It'll just wither and die uh, if you really want it. And Pippin smiles uh, intently, smelling the blossom once more. And she's like, this flower is very, very valuable to me. I, I need this flower. Um for a medicine that I'm working on for Solomon. I will trade you something very valuable for it if you are willing to give it to me. Morgan kind of shrugs and looks at you, Zogi, and says, I don't know, what do you think? Uh, I think um, Pippin has very good intentions and she's always willing to help people in need. And I think um, it would be our turn to give her the help that she needs. With that, Morgan nods and says, Pippin, you can keep the flower. Um, really, I, it's, it's not a big deal. And Pippin stomps on the ground twice, and a blossom comes up um, from the ground, and the flower blossom opens, revealing a uh, mask. And she says, please, Zogi, Morgan, take this as a, as, as a token of our, my thanks. 
you've saved me so much time and effort. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll kind of like uh, reach forward and grab it and say, no, th uh, Pippin, thank you. Um, it was very nice to see you again. Thank you, Zogi. And Morgan looks at the mask and kind of like, there's no features to this mask, really. It's just like a blank math mask, almost like Vega from Street Fighter. Um, and she's like, as soon as Pippin turns and walks away, she goes, you can definitely keep that. There is no way I am wearing that mask. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a uh, snicker after comment. <laughs> And you look at the mask, um, seeing what it is, and um, immediately recognize um, that it is a valuable object. And again, you have had amazing card draws tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> so she's handing this to me. Yes, Morgan's handing it to you. She will not wear this featureless mirrored mask. Uh, and with that, you're going to take the um, sunship back to the actuality and enjoy a peaceful ride um, back to Saturn. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll take this moment and kind of... Um... I'll just kind of lean over and I'll, I'll just thank Morgan. Make one more interaction check. Okay. Uh, what's the bonuses on this one going to be? Um, I'm going to go straight up, uh, just plain interaction plus your persuasion. Uh, six. All right. And do you get anything from the card for the Lost Star? Um, no. Okay. Um, so Morgan smiles as you thank her for the evening, and as she kind of says, you know, I I have to thank you, Zogi, because, you know, I, I did not think I was going to have such a good time tonight based on our last date at Winners and Losers. Um, and really, you really came through on this. I, I've got to say, I'm really impressed. I had a really good time tonight. You know, Morgan, the honor is mine. Uh, since my return to the actuality, I haven't felt a moment of true uh, tranquility and peaceness um, due to the fact that everybody wants to kill me. So it's very refreshing um, being some surrounded with somebody who just um, fills me with joy and uh, somehow always leaves me breathless. Oh, look at him going, being smooth. All right. Um, she, uh, she asks if you'd be willing to walk her home, um, as the sunship arrives back in Saturn. Uh, absolutely. All right, we're going to go with one more card flip. Honestly, I gotta look this one up because I don't think we have barely ever played this one. Yeah, it does not look familiar. Um, I do believe that is gonna give a bonus on my family though. It looks like it is a visions. Hmm, that is interesting. Okay. All right, so um, you walk back to the hollows, um, and as you two are strolling back um, through the hollows, there seems to be a ruckus, and even though it's a late hour, people seem to be really up in arms, and 
you're hearing lots of things um, being said and whatnot. Um, and it, it, you're just, it piques your curiosity. And as you walk down the street and you get close to our home, there's a crowd of young gentlemen on the street um, and they seem to be arguing back and forth about something. And you can tell they're very excited, but you can't quite make out what it is that's causing all this excitement. Okay. Um, are they, like, directly in our path of uh, travel? They are. So, like, as we uh, get uh, walk closer, I kind of want to try to pick up on what they're uh, getting so aroused about. All right. Go ahead and take a perception check. And I am going to use the, um, the Vex okay. uh, on this check. So it's going to be minus two. Uh, so you, okay. So it's going to be a minus uh, one because I think the card is, is your family. family. Yep. yep. So it's going to be a minus one on that. All right. Go ahead and roll it. Five. All right. So as you're walking by, um, you're able to dis disconcern from their conversation that Ben Shepard, the Garant for the Hollows, has been removed from office. Oh, did they kind of uh, mention who uh, has taken over? They do not. You're not able to get that tidbit of information. It was only a partial success. Okay. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm not one to be invested in politics, so I'm kind of just uh, minding my own business. All right. Um, so at last, you finally make your way back to her house, and um, she kind of sighs as you guys walk up the path uh, to her door and turns on you and, again, thanks you and saying, Zogi, you know, I had a really great time. I would love to do this again. Abs absolutely. You know what? Next time, you name the date, and I, I will be there. I would love to see your interests and uh, what you find exciting. All right. So I just flipped uh, the crowded tome, tomb, um, which is funny because that card effect is something comes to an end <laughs> as you end your date. <laughs> True. <laughs> so you, you had a great run of cards tonight. Um, and she smiles back at you and – she says, you know, Zogi, I would really like to go see the city on a, the hill in the blue sun. Um, with all the demons and the, and the clockworks that we've been fighting and whatnot, I think it'd be great just to spend some time in the City of Angels and get some perspective. Uh, the uh, blue sun or the silver sun? The silver sun. The city on the hill is the... Okay. Um, yeah, we've been there. I just thought I heard you say blue sun, that's all. Sorry, no nope, uh, silver sun. Yeah, so Zoe's gonna take um, interest in that, you know, um, ex uh, exclaiming to her that I was there um, last week, two weeks ago actually, and it's a very beautiful place, and I would love to um, take a tour there with her again. It's a date, she says, um, and she leans forward to give you another kiss, good night, um, and then pulls back, kind of blushing a little bit. She turns and goes into her house, leaving you standing in front of her um, house, just flabbergasted. <laughs> True. All right. For the side session, I am also going to award you the next step in your um, date quest here. Okay. Which, let me take a peek at that. Um All right, if I am looking at this correctly. All 
All right, so you already got the courtship one last. Uh, no, you got the opening last time. You're on courtship, okay. uh, which can be multiple steps. Uh, it's a one acumen reward. Um, and it says you begin seeing this person regularly, although not every date is a step in this arc. The significant moments are, and there may be a few of them. Uh, I definitely feel like this was a significant moment for you okay. um, because it was the successful first date that you tried to pull off last time. Um, and you've definitely, uh, based on your card flips and whatnot, you hit a home run tonight with your date. Okay. Um, so is that going to be one acumen or is that two? Yeah, it's one acumen. Okay. And that completes that step. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and note that inside of Scabbard. And what do you think? Is there anything else you want to wrap up here as a post-development wrap-up? Uh, no, I think I pretty much hit everything that I wanted to hit. Um, I have a new goal that I will be discussing um, probably in a, uh, a post-group uh, arc on uh, Obsidian Portal and kind of take it from there. Excellent. Um, I think I'm also going to throw you a joy for the session because that really went well for your character. Um, and, you know, you set this goal of uh, exploring a relationship with Morgan, and I think you did a great job with it. So I'm going to kick you a joy as well, because he seems to be, like, a very good thing for Zogi. Right. Um, yeah, I, I can agree with that. All um, right. Um, kinda, is there... I, I just want to add one more last note. Um for the session, just kind of as a, like a little last touch, um, kind of, does she have any like plants in her window cells? Like, yeah, she, she has, uh, two planters in her front window cells that are, that have flowers in them. Yeah. So I'll just use my, uh, can trip and kind of give them a last burst of life as kind of like a, a goodbye. Very nice touch. Very nice touch. All right, I think that's going to wrap us up for our uh, side session. Thanks for everybody who joined us. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, thanks, Sogi, for taking part. Absolutely. Thank you for jamming tonight. Excellent. And uh, just a reminder, we'll all be playing on Saturday again as Oxivius uh, continues the adventure he started last week um, as DM. Uh, so feel free to... Tune in and check us out at 4 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, anything you want to add, Oxivius? No, I think you guys did a really great job tonight. So congrats to Zogi for finally having a girlfriend that's not trying to kill him or be overly fanatic. And then uh, you did a great job running. Thanks, X. All right. We'll see everybody on Saturday. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.